It's summer of 2023 over here at Legoland Windsor and in today's video we'll be getting inside the park itself showing you what's about for this year, looking at some construction too and maybe even giving you a few tips and tricks along the way. So with no further ado, my name is Tom Derek from Theme Park Coasting and let's go into Legoland Windsor Resort. And just through the entrance and a little bit up the stairs we have now made it into one area that many people do not know when coming towards Legoland Windsor the model making studio. Now this is where the Rebuild the World is. Well actually, that's just down there. But if you make your way up the staircase and come out here, you'll notice that there's so much up here to explore and see. Now, of course, when it's busy at the park like it is today, we've got 40, 50 minute queues for rides. You can take a look around and build all the models. There's also lots of like displays here, for example, a Den of Model Builder, lots of different animals. You've got a like, Lego Movie over there, the Batman, stuff like that. And if you make your way around here, you can see all the different icons from, of course, UK history, as well as a phenomenal view all over here at Winter Castle. Now, this is a quick little tip for you guys. You can see the entrance just down there, but I thought when anything here, there's no better way to start off this video than to show you this fantastic view that you can really only get from over here at Legoland Windsor. And for any of my frequent Legoland visitors out there, Viking Splash has now reopened. However, word of warning, for the last few weeks, it's been open, then closed, and open and closed, even on the same day. So if you are in over towards Legoland Windsor and want to head on this so-called water attraction, which has no water effects and doesn't get you wet, then we'll just get on here straight away in order that it doesn't close again later on in your visit. But be aware as well that at the same time it's obviously good to go on straight away, at the start and the end of the day, with this being further up the hill, it can get a lot busier than right now in the middle of the day, as you can see right behind me, it's got around a five minute queue, which is definitely more up our stream. And five minutes and six seconds later, we got on the ride itself. Very good fun though, recommend it. Oh, really? At the same time, that many rides over here in Legoland have pretty much got walk-on queues, as you did see by Ninjago. There are some always guaranteed rides, and no matter what time you go, no matter how rainy, no matter how warm, no matter whatever time you go, it is going to be walk-on. A fairy tale book is definitely one of these rides, and every time we come to Legoland Windsor, we'll just go on it. It's in a perfect area of Jura Valley. Don't think that Jura Valley is just for kids, but it kind of is. But this is kind of the main ride over here at the land, and it is so much fun. You can open the Tar Charters, and I imagine for many charters to come, it'll still be around. It's got many scenes from all around the different fairy tales, such as Sleeping Beauty, just around here, part of the seven dwarfs as well, in a sec. But honestly, this is such a great ride, and there's so many like this, but you don't have to queue a long time to experience and the reason why I don't have a long queue is because the throughput is very quick and a lot of people just don't think they're very good but these are fantastic rides isn't that right Hansel and Gretel? This is my command, you can see by the amount of boats that are going down with people and this is a very very busy ride today literally almost empty the whole way around and as we stand right outside the new for 2020 Jupo Diana coaster I think it's a perfect time to talk about the new addition for next year and unfortunately I haven't got my really zoom in camera at the moment so I won't be able to get any close shots for you guys but you can see the area for this new coaster and it does look really really awesome my only concern is how is it going to fit into this land as well because if you currently look at it you can see down here you have basically got the whole of Valley looking amazing and I think a Duplo Dino coaster was a great addition towards this land however if they have had like, I don't know a Lego City sort of ride or whatever you do whatever, racing or whatever with this dual coaster it may look a little bit out of place for having two coasters one up there and one down there within this land so, a little bit of construction for you guys. You can see them when they're kind of sitting on their phones. So it hasn't been going on that fast, but there is so much more coming over here towards Legoland Windsor. And if you do want to see a separate video where we go into full detail about this land, what is going to happen towards this new area, as well as all the hotels and resorts that are also currently getting built, we'll make sure to do that. But you can see up here, as West Diners on Iso by the new construction for a brand new dueling boomerang coaster that is coming here hopefully next year. Especially during these hot summer days, one thing I should definitely advise is going to the Lego store between 12 and 1 because look at these, they're not just here for show, it can get very, very busy by the end of the day. But if you come right now, it's currently around uh, 2 o'clock ish, so it's a little bit late and you can already see the crowd starting to build up. But what you can do is head around this store, see everything you want to buy, and even if you don't buy it to the end of the day, at least you have a much pleasurable shopping experience, seeing everything rather than being crammed up between people the whole time. Well, I'll tell you my nice job. And of course, down here, you can see all the different Legolands around the world. However, 
They're not very really mapped out, they are. Yeah, they're a little bit messed up at the moment. I mean, but... California, that one? We're a long way around the world, really. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's America, obviously. That's Europe and Asia. Well, yeah, California's clearly not one of those. Japan's not there. I mean, the bar's next to Australia. <laughs> I don't know. It's a little messed up. A little messed up, but point being, coming here in the middle, a lot quieter, a lot nicer, and also the car park is just down there, so you can just have a car if you are heading by car. Not out yet, but maybe and when you come over towards the Lego Studios 4D Theatre, it's a brand new dream. There's something else just down there, which we'll show you after we watch our next show, which I have no idea what that actually is, but this one is cool anyway when it comes out. Long story short, now Izzy, myself, and our friends are dream chasers. Our mission is to journey into the dream world. Wow. And as promised, there is a little Dega Dreams thing just over here. And what it's going to be, honestly, I don't know. It's not going to be permanent, as you can clearly see. But you can see we're actually working on it just down there. And it is next to the brand new build and race Ferrari area. Which you did go into earlier. I'm not going to bring you in today because it's one of those things where yeah, it's yeah. a one time thing. But it once and it's, done, but it's still going on. This thing here, it looks good. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's sort of a promotion tour, whatever that is, but... I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be like, you're going to walk in there and you may watch a little video about it, or maybe a bit of advertising. Come on, it's the shortest walk we've ever seen. It is. Literally, it's just that box there. But I know Phil Parkinson's and like, things like this recently, where they like, advertise a movie or whatever, and they put it in like, a little box. Um, maybe they take your photo or something, I'm not sure, but... It's it quite it like, you've got, you got builders and characters over there, you've got a little oh, yeah. tub there you can build them. But how long will be here for? I don't know. I still love when that old drop tower was here. Anyone remember that space one? It still go down, unfortunately, because we didn't want, didn't want to obstruct the view from Windsor Castle, actually. Yeah. Fun fact for you guys. But it was um, good fun. That there looks okay. It's giving me for a few months. Yeah. Gonna advertise a new show as well as new Lego sets, Lego yeah. Dreams. But we didn't even know about it until we came in today. But here you go. A little look at the Lego Dreams walk through building slash something and maybe open when you come. One thing I absolutely love about Legoland is always something new, whether it's a ride, whether it's food, or whether it's another little walkthrough like we've just shown you. Have <laughs> that rhymes. But talking about that, we are now looking at the brand new Granny Apple Fries. Now, I say these are new, but not new to Legoland, but new to Legoland Windsor, because Adam was saying we past, I had no idea. But he said over Florida, these Granny Apple Fries are like the biggest thing ever. And I mean, I've literally just searched up, I've just searched up the Apple Fries. The first thing that came up was Apple Fries Legoland. It's a bit like in. Disney World for chocolate apples. Yeah, exactly. It's really famous out there, and literally people go to the parks up there for it. Um, and I've always wanted to have some, but obviously I've never had the opportunity to, of course, go to like, until let's do it. Can't remember until now. You can have some. So you got apple fries as so, well as some cream. Yeah. It's never because we don't really like the cream or not. But I'm not an apple person. Normally, really a fry person, to be frank, honest. So I don't know. Adam, you have the pleasure of having it. So I've just had one, and wow, they are amazing. Really yeah, good. Very so normal I mean, fries. Yeah. Definitely. And they're definitely. worth five pounds. I mean, this, you've got to like apple, obviously, but if you do like that, oh, they're amazing. I can see why everyone's going on the back. Yeah, and you go over to Harvey, you're, you're a food guy. <laughs> do, you, do you like apple fries? Yeah, these are really good. And I want to get five a day too. Yeah. <laughs> and, exactly. and, and, and most likely not. <laughs> <laughs> So is it, is it worth a five pounds? I know it's getting money discounts worth to point yeah, out. See, I mean, I say that if you get the money discounts, it's definitely worth it because it's around four pounds. So obviously, it's quite expensive for some fries like elsewhere. But you are in a theme market; it is a very unique thing. Um, but if it's five pounds, I think that's a little bit too steep. So I think with money discount, it's good, but without maybe a little bit too much. But I'd still get it if you really want to. And as we've seen, over there was the only place that you can get in the little food trucks. Whether it's just a summer thing, whether it's not, I don't know. So when you come over here, be sure to grab both because you never know; it might be gone by this time next year. The train definitely shouldn't be going that way into the station. Clearly it broke down, but yeah. It's basically going in reverse. If you're there and get to go on the train, in reverse. Ah, oh, that's unique. Don't see that very often, or ever really. Also another quick tip for you guys, it's just this is a long queue, don't go in it. Early this one about 50 minutes long, it's kind of way around here. And now, it's like an hour later, it's literally walk on, so guys, if you can do the leg down winter, see the long queue, don't go on it, check out later on, and then most likely if you're not sure, because everyone does a big rise first, and you get through the day, the bigger rise such as this, just gets extremely quiet. Is that Indiana Jones? No guys, it is Johnny. Thunder with his friend Monkey, which obviously is also not from Indiana Jones. Now, I don't want to point this out as a new update, but seriously, there's a new one, there's a new stuff going here. I mean, this area used to be really good, and Halloween is amazing because all the Halloween stuff is, but now they're kind of 
adding some things. I think it was Lego. I think I'm going to put it out there. I know it's quite a nice, like, sensory sort of space. This one is where you can have like a little yeah, picnic. It was, yeah. And it's quite a big area. Yeah, well, we cut down a few trees recently to make this whole pathway down here. So. So I think what's going to happen... Even though everyone walks across here, no one actually goes down the path. The place where I think it's going to happen, so they have actually had some new signs, which I'm not sure if you showed them yet, but there's some new signs Oh yeah, there. yeah. I mean, it's all about woodland creatures. And of course, you have this massive space over here, and the gate to the main road, um, which of course is the back road for Legoland. It's, it's just there. It's just there. So I think they're actually going to build, of course, during the new holiday village. I reckon they're actually going to have like a little trial bit here where you can go and explore, of course, one of the cabins to see if you'd like to stay there. Or maybe, you know, maybe May, and that's the extreme area, like a little path being down here. They could do. I or mean, like, it's a long walk, but they could do. Or like a little, I don't know, like a tram or like a little train ride or something. Yeah, I, like I mean, because if you think about the other hotels, get a picture down there, and it's always not a special entrance from a hotel. Yeah, exactly. And there's yeah. a perfect car out here. It's not a lot down at the moment. They have like a little, they have like a little train station that brings you there and from. It's a perfect, like, nice little room for like little like holiday stuff down there. And even for like, early access as well. You can have this is like an early access area. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can have this like yeah. I, I know if it was Disney, you know, do that. Yeah. Merlin, you, ne you sometimes they do a good thing, sometimes they do a bad thing. You never know. Yeah, I'm I think of Merlin. Very unpredictable. But. Sometimes you go, oh, wow, I'm amazing. And the other times it's like, ah, oh, Merlin. <laughs> but we are not making our way over to our next section. It's going to be the dragon. There's no real tips and tricks around this ride apart from do it at the end of the day. And this all is a really start. good one. Oh, the start, actually, yeah. yeah both both are really good time to do it. They've all got walking cues at the yeah. start and end of the day. And like, a lot of people say that don't come here at the start, though. I found that usually you can get this Dragon's Apprentice and, of course, um, Merlin's Tragic. Yeah, because it's a bit far away from any entrance. So yeah. if you have push chairs, there's no way you're getting down here earlier on. So yeah, you, you get them all done within that half an hour. Well, yeah. So. That's a little tip for you guys. And there's one more tip at the end of the day I want to give you guys about our final ride. Because currently, as you can see, it's only quarter to two. So we're going to get on this one and hopefully one more. And if we do, we'll give you a little tip what you can do before you get on the last ride. Big fun fact for you guys, this model here used to be at the start of the Dragons. If you look at some early POVs or when it's open, I'm going to say 1997, you'll see these two at the start of the ride. But now they're just situated right outside of the Night's Kingdom in this little corner bit. And here we now are, our final and most awesome ride of our video today, Pirate Fool's Shed Quest. Now it does not mean it's going to be our final tip of this video at all. Firstly, never pay a Pirate Blaster with over there. I mean, it looks so awful in such an amazingly themed land. But also, if it is the last ride of your day, no matter how long the queue is, if you get in there by park closing, you will be able to get on the ride. As currently, it is around 10 to, which means if we get on this ride right now, even if the queue is around an hour long, you will still be on the ride. They do close the queue, however, at the o'clock. And then to close it at five past. However, we never ever see that. It's normally the o'clock. So we would suggest leave that big queue attraction, which always is a long queue, which in the summer is always part of falls, until right at the end of the day. The monks are normally having the shortest of queue lines, as you can see right now. It has always got enough queue line for you to get on that ride, even if it does close. Plus, another thing that Merlin Parks normally do, and we saw one of the dragons in 45 minutes, but it was only five minutes, is they actually extend the queue at the end of the day, as the cast members can only come home from this park once the queue is empty. So rides like this, unfortunately, with it being popular at the end of the day, the cast members will go home a little bit later on, hence why I put the queue a little bit shorter, a bit longer than it should it actually is, which means that they can go on at the start of the day, it's the other way around, a little bit shorter, so you go on the ride at the start of the day, lead to the end. So the cast members do what they do, but only I'd say those be respectful if you're over here right now, don't wait until absolutely the last minute to get on the ride, but you know it happens, and personally, I always like to get on it if I have a chance, I wouldn't wait until the end of the day to do it, I'll go on there when I do get a chance chance to go on it like right now it's not the o'clock but we're over the ride and instead of waiting outside we're gonna make our way down towards Pirate Fool's Treasure Quest because it's still an amazing feeling he's got a giant chin but what an amazing ride to finish off our day on right now and as we go up the hill we'll give you a few little more tips before ending off this video as well as showing you actually in fact the brand new holiday village and golf course You know what I said earlier, but sometimes Merlin takes our breath away and other times you go, oh Merlin, this is an old Merlin moment. A few weeks ago we went on Pirate Falls and we were absolutely drenched. And today we're around, not a single water effect working whatsoever. And it's not a one's broken, because if one's broken you get the other working, or the other scenes working at least. Yeah. But it's like we just went, nah, we can't bother today doing that. nothing was working. The only reason we're quite wet is because of the drop. I yeah, think. and I mean, it's yeah. not the sort of day where it's cold. I know it's it's cold, but it's warm. It's no, just they couldn't nice just they couldn't turn it on. So that's that. However, one little tip we want to give and start from this into it today, but sometimes so we've just getting as I said earlier, a little bit before the end, but especially on rides like Pirate Falls, now you never guarantee this. 
But last thing on it, because we got there, like one or two boats after the last person boarded, because they just have to send it all around, I went, do you want to go around for another go? Yeah, so we actually got two rides in at the end. Um, I don't actually, unfortunately today, we didn't get two rides in there. Never expect that, but... but to be fair, the stuff I've been here all day, so I right, never mind. It's yeah, exactly, just, yeah, it's just a boat. If we go above and beyond, it's nice. It's like a, yeah, exactly, it's an up, up and a beyond approach to that ride, but sometimes you can give up. If you are the lot of person in the queue line, you'll never get that because... Yeah. Yeah, the whole boat will be gone by the time you get back. Or even so. if it's like the Dragon or something, sometimes you are actually allowed to switch seats. So if someone's going for the back ride the last train of the day, yeah. you are actually allowed to go and seat in front yeah, of Yeah, well, especially on that one, because they're going to run yeah. anyway, so you might as well. But again, bonus, not guaranteed. So that's another little tip for you guys. We now make our way up the hill to finish our day. But I do hope you enjoyed this kind of video. We never normally do these sort of ones, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to get up here today. We'll give it a go and see if you guys enjoy. So if you do enjoy, make sure to like, subscribe and comment below. That tells me that you enjoyed this video and we can do more just like this one right here. So make our way to the top, treat a little bit more construction from over at the golf course and possibly the, uh, the holiday village. Yeah. I mean, not much has happened there, but nah. I mean, of course. Well, so it's another video because yeah. I think at the end of the day, when you've got all the cars going out as well, it's a bit awkward jumping in Exactly. No, it has actually got pushed back to October. So it's early October. I'm not sure what day it exactly is. But yeah, if you wanted to know, it has actually got pushed back for the end of the golf course. Um, yeah, we got yeah, and we'll be back on the opening day, sharing it with you guys, of course, as well. Stay tuned to that. We're going to go to the top boat. We'll share that off course, and then we're going to end this video, the exciting construction video, from over here at Legoland Windsor in August 2023. And this is exactly why we go to the shop in the middle of the day, because not only have you now got a 20 minute queue to get in there, but as you can most likely see from inside the building itself, it's absolutely crammed, and once you find and do get in the shop, You've been waiting like about five or ten minutes to get house. Look at that. Absolutely crazy. Only here like on Windsor you can you get something like that. A queue to get into the shop itself. So then you wait another queue to then buy something. So just get in the middle of the day, guys. It's not that hard. Take the hill train up and avoid that sort of line at the end of the day. So right behind me right now, you can see the brand new crazy golf course come over here to Lake on Windsor. It was meant to actually open two days ago, but as I've said earlier, it's not very done. You can see a dead priority over towards the Holloway Village, which of course is gonna make them a lot more money over here. And to be honest, I'm most excited for it. I mean, the Crazy Golf Course is awesome, but with them charging Merlin Pass holders to get into the actual Crazy Golf Course, it's not something we do all the time. Maybe like a one off thing or an occasional thing, but I've got a feeling. But after we do it once, unless it's phenomenal, it's going to be like one of the awesome towns where you do occasionally, but eventually lower down the price a little bit. But I'd rather just pay on like a yearly pass for that Crazy Golf. Like, for example, I don't know, we say £50 a year, you get the Golf Course, what you want to get like one day, one time per visit. I don't know, I'd be quite nice because it's nice to do after school or if you live nearby you can go up and go and play the crazy golf however well on the way out to give you a bit of information about the car park itself it is huge you will never have a problem finding a car park spot they rarely ever open the extended car parks and if you do end up going in the grass car park and extended one be prepared for a very very busy day but they've got more car parks than you can even imagine we've never ever seen them turn away cars ever they turn away people always in our cars because it's too full so you'll be fine in that sense However, the parking itself is definitely not cheap, as parking here is around £10 if you go in the normal car park or the private car park, just down the side, next to the crazy golf course down there, you're looking at around £16 per person. So be prepared for it to be very, very expensive when going over here for parking. Of course, other options include the buses, which come, you've got the Green Line bus, but down to Windsor, or you can get from London as well. You've also got stuff like the taxis, which is just behind me right there, which of course is always handy, but depending on where you live, it's like a car, you know how taxis work. So that's that, all other options you can walk, and I'll give you a little secret bonus tip right now. Right at the bottom of this hill is a park and ride. Now, it's outside the hotel entrance, and we do have an annual pass, it doesn't really matter for us, but we like to have a real walk down anyway, we're getting picked up. But if you go into a park and ride, you pay for the bus park, which means if you're in the middle, really think it's you are, you just park down there, quick walk up the hill, you're in the park. So you can park for absolutely free and walk down. And especially during those firework days, this queue gets so long, but it's quick to walk down the hill, go out park and ride. Yes, it's a bit of a walk, but at the end of the day, you're saving 10, 16 quid. So I don't know if it gets worth it or not, but that's a little bonus tip from us. It's nothing that's wrong because it's a park and ride. I don't think it's actually owned by Legoland Window itself. It's a owned by the government and that's how they do the thing like that. So little tip for you guys go over here towards the park but I think on that final tip note I've never given any videos before but that's the first one I'll give it to you guys we're going to end this little video from over here of course as I said earlier this is our first one doing this if you've enjoyed please like subscribe and comment down below but it's been amazing doing it. I've really enjoyed sharing all these tips with you guys 
and Clark Updates. We might do one every month, you never know. If it goes well, we sure will do. But that is it for me, Tom Derek, Hugo and Adam are just behind right there. But I'll see you guys later for the next theme park racing video on the channel. Goodbye guys.